Parenting Versus Podcast is a proud member of the Borellas Podcasters Guild. Good evening. Welcome to the Parenting Versus Podcast. Podcast. So, we are podcasting. <laughs> what? I never know what to what say. What is I, that? I, I know. I don't you know don't have like a tagline to start yeah. it off or like a, like a... So, hi. How are you? Keep it classy, San Diego. No, yeah. I mean like there's nothing... Yeah, what do you even say? Um, Nobody knows. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're sitting in our office... Yeah. Um, kids are watching a Christmas movie. For now. For now. <laughs> um, I'm sure there'll be some distractions here in a minute, but... Yeah. Anyways, yeah. how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. I have a stomach full of food, so I'm grateful for that. Mm. Um, I have a blanket around my legs. Burgerville. Burgerville. Grateful for that. And um, trying not to look at the next door up, because it, it can get kind of... Triggering? Kind of triggering sometimes. I, I try to be kind, though, because... It's like, yeah, those people legitimately are my neighbors. <laughs> Maybe they need to have some Burgerville, too. I know. That was good. I ate way too much, though. Oh, for sure. Me, too. Um, Rosemary, truffle oil fries. Stop it. This is... Okay, so the the good thing about living in Portland is that there is a lot of food choices, and it's all really good. The bad thing about living in Portland is that there's a lot of food choices, and it's all really good. Mm-hmm. So, so you're going to go broke and... You're and gain gonna, like 50 pounds. Yeah. You're going to trade your money for weight. Um, we really need to stop eating out. Like, this needs to come we to We haven't really end. ate out much since we've been here, have we? So I feel we've had... Like, okay, so let's see if I can name them. I feel like I've... Salt and Straw. Uh-huh. I mean, you've gone a lot more than us. <laughs> because wow, you've met, judgy. You, I'm not judging. Mm-hmm. Because you've been... You've, you have friends. Sort of. Um, <laughs> that you go places with. I mean, mostly it's coffee. Today it was macaroons because I we watch found a show. This place, no, I found this. Well, yeah, we watch a show and there was macaroons on there, and I was like mm, macaroons. And then I googled macaroons Portland, and I found a bakery. And my friends like, I'll meet you there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're not making this easy for me at all. But yes, I'll meet you there too. <laughs> macaroons don't do don't do it for me. It, it's it's marshmallow and like squishy. No, oil. no. Isn't that marshmallow in it? It's like egg whites. That are crispy on top, like with flavor and cream uh, and. I've been no. getting the Circle K ones. That's why they ha- don't have macaroon. Circle K. Not a sponsor. Maybe a sponsor. If they are, go to Circle K. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the fact that you're telling me there's macaroons at Circle K both intrigues and disturbs me. <laughs> you can get macaroons like pretty cheap packaged I, no. ones at a gas station. No, you can't. You never know. I don't think what you think macaroons are. Are I'm, really macaroons? I, I think you're. I think you're confused. You're probably right. <laughs> that's Anyways, like, no, that's like when I worked at Starbucks and people would come in and they'd be like, "I want a latte," and you'd make them a latte, and they'd be like, "No, where's all the syrup and the flavor?" And you're like, "Oh, you want like a gas station latte? Like that's what you think a latte is?" And it turns out they don't even want that. They want like a frappuccino, and they don't even know what they want. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> um. So yeah. Uh, so I've. I've been to Salt and Straw, mm-hmm. um, Burgerville. Burgerville. Uh, we did uh, some Chinese takeout last night. Yeah. Um, Taipei Noodle House was delicious. Thank was you. That, for was that. that the name of it? Yeah. Okay. And Von Eber uh, Von beer. Eber. I've been getting but take that's out, beer. Take out that's beer. not food. I mean, I guess it could be um, a meal. On it's a, glass. a food. It's pretty what dark else? beer. Uh, we did a food truck. Yeah. Um, Mexican food, food truck. I wonder if people think we're like total jerks for just like going out. Bunch of a holes. No, we're not. We're um, not, we're not well, like Port- sitting down. Portland and ha- is all out. takeout, so you order and then you leave. Yeah. Um, and everybody's like masking up and being crazy. Yeah, you don't crazy, actually go into safe. the building. Usually, it's just a window and they hand yeah. you your food. You're not breathing on each other. No. Um, where else have we been? Um. Yeah. Oh. Oh, um, hot lips pizza. Hot lips. Yeah, that was we were staying. At the hotel when we first got here. Another Chinese uh, takeout downtown, which was delicious. It was so delicious. Amazing. 
Wow, we are jerks. Why? Like, we're like food jerks. Because we've been eating so much? Yeah. Well, part of those meals, I'm very blessed uh, to have oh, been my. covered by my employer who is moving us out here, which oh. I... Yeah. We had the, fish and chips at the coast. Oh, yeah. That was good. Yeah. Um, and then various coffee delights... Because yeah. I'm a coffee person and I have yeah. to try every single coffee place. So we're going to set up a GoFundMe to help with our rent. Um, <laughs> Sorry. that's I'm laughing because given the situation that's happening in Portland right now with the Red House, mm-hmm. it's I can't I can't even go there right now. Yeah. Well. I, I'm gonna, I don't want to be triggered, but that's... That might, no. That if might you don't know what the Red House is, Google it. Um, there's... Anyways, yeah, just Google it. My, <laughs> is there something kind of funny... Um, my dad is on my, uh, YouTube. I so saw we, we, we have YouTube TV that we share between, uh, us and my dad, my brother, and one of my, one of my friends back in Albuquerque. We kind of, um, actually me and my buddy, we split it halfway as far as the bill's concerned. But, uh, when I moved out here, I set up the billing to be our home address, which mm-hmm. means we get por- uh, local Portland, uh, TV stations. Yeah. <laughs> and... My dad also started getting local Portland TV stations in Albuquerque. But he likes it. Um, and I thought, oh, that's a bummer. Like, you need to watch your local news. So I was, like, Googling it and trying to figure out how do I set this up to, so that you are getting local Albuquerque TV stations. Um, because I, my, my buddy, John, um, he wanted his local t- station. So we figured it out. And then I went to call my dad to get him changed back to local Albuquerque. And he's like, oh, no, I've been really entertained with uh, Portland uh, TV stations. He's, like, talking to me about the Red House. Which Um, neither of us have even, like, we were not, like, paying attention. Yeah. We got here in the middle of that, and, like, we had no idea. Like, we knew there was a thing with this Red House downtown, and there was, like, Mm -hmm. people's, like, a standoff or a protest or, like, something. But we were like, no, we don't really know the details. Not really something we're following, right? Your dad, though. Yeah, so he's been (laughs) watching that pretty closely. But anyways, yeah, so... As far as food is concerned, like the, I think that's about it that we've had. Yeah. Um, mostly we've been cooking. I can't believe we've been here for two weeks, haven't we? Isn't that weird? Yeah. Two weeks yeah. Uh, yesterday. Weird, huh? Craziness. I know. It's yeah. wild. It is, um, it is cool, though. But we, we did make a, make a promise to each other on this podcast that we were not going to just talk about Portland. So I think we'll try not to. We'll it's, try it's, not to. It's I still mean, new. It's still fresh for us. This so. podcast has been just us talking about what's on our mind. Mm-hmm. And I don't think you can get away with with such, such a huge uh, you know, life change to get away with not talking about it. You know what I mean? Well, I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you meddling kids. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, You're not having my jokes at all. <laughs> You're like, anyway. <laughs> no, that was a good joke. Good one. Thanks. Um <laughs> So, it's very odd, I will say, it is very odd when you strip down the distractions of your life when you've been rooted in a place for so long, like in Albuquerque. Like, I had friends and stuff to do and places to go and things to see, and I had a very vivid and very busy social life, right, because of all the things I had going on. And even in COVID, like, I was fortunate enough to have enough going on to take care of that I was, like, not even, like, mentally bored. Like, I would have stuff to do at home um, that would, you know, keep me busy. So moving here, a lot of that has been stripped away. And so it's really weird (laughs) because I have all of this time that I've never – I haven't had in a very long time. Um, (laughs) You're not – you're not the type of person that's going to stay home and be like content with that. You need to move around and you need right. You need interaction with other humans that aren't your kids and aren't your husband. That's true. And and the thing is like even in Albuquerque though, like I'm not like going out to bars or anything. Like it's more just like I I know where I can go in town. I can get stuff done. I can stop by the coffee shop that I have my jewelry at. I can say hi, get my cup of coffee, socialize. I can, you know, run a couple errands, go home and I get that fulfilled. But here, like not knowing so many people and not having that day-to-day routine because it wasn't established. It hasn't been established yet. I mean, we're in the middle of COVID. We just moved here and you haven't started working yet. So it's like, I don't have a day-to-day routine, which is kind of weird. Um, I have all this random mental time. Yeah. I And I think that routine is is really important to, to just humans' uh, overall joy and happiness. Mm-hmm. I was listening to 
um, a podcast from, it's called The Cozy Robot, which is Mike McCarg. Um, I have to be in moods, in, in the right mood mm-hmm. to listen to his podcast. And sometimes I have to force myself to listen to his podcast because he's a, he's a little bit over the top sort of, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to describe his podcast. It's hard. Over it's, the top in what way? Like, like which direction on the spectrum are we talking? Very, very, very left. Okay. And very, very much. Um, it's he's his. I'm trying to like put this into words without being um, an a hole. You can be uh, an a hole. It's your podcast. <laughs> but like, I don't want to be an a hole. Oh, you know. Look at you. Um, You're so nice. He's. <laughs> He's breaking down, I guess, like the stereotypes of what masculinity and femininity is, uh-huh. at least for masculinity. Like femininity, he's he's all for like be feminine, like mothers are are great, and I, I agree with that too. But like the mass, like to be masculine is is not a thing. Uh-huh. It seems like I don't know. I might be interpreting that wrong, but it's what do you mean it's to a be masculine is not a thing. Like to be like the stereotypical like masculine like machismo. Um. Even further than that. Okay. Like, I don't think that machismo is, like, a good thing. No, it's I don't, not. And it's a bad thing. But it's hyper-masculine. Fact. It's hyper-masculine. I guess that's a good thing that well, what's Mike, what Mike's doing then. Because, like, the stereotypes of what being a man is are... A lot of those things are pretty terrible. Like... Don't, I, I, crying, I, don't show your feelings. Yeah, don't cry. Don't show your feelings. Um, <laughs> Eat meat raw. Just kidding. I don't know. Right. Like that sort of thing. Like you need a truck and you need to have dirty hands and busted knuckles. You should be washing um, your hair with beer. Yeah. Actually, that's really good for your hair. You, you need to fight and, and hunt deer and shit. But, uh, you need to grab those deer by the antlers. Kind of. But yeah, Mike's definitely a type of, the type of person who's very open with feelings. And like on the podcast, he cries oh. sometimes. Um, Mike, it's which, gonna be okay. Which is hard as a man to kind of just listen to another man crying um, on a podcast. Well, but, because it gives it it gives your masculinity permission to cry. But and, it's also kind of I'm embarrassed for him. But, but even though he's not embarrassed, like I don't know. But that's society telling you that you should be embarrassed as a man right. to cry. But I'm the type of person that I'm like totally cool with feelings. Even more so, I think a lot of. A lot, of, a lot of times more than women are. I don't know. Um, are you talking about women or me? I just said women. I'm not. I'm not gonna say names. Um, it's me. You're talking about me. <laughs> like I'm. Let's call it out here. It's me. Yeah. No, it's true though. In our relationship, I think you are more emotional than I am in a lot of ways. But I don't think that's bad. I don't. think I mean, that's a problem. I it think can it's... be. I guess. Like if you're a woman and you just want, you just want a man that, that spits and fights and I mean I don't want that and I was gonna say a bad word but um you know what I mean like that's sometimes women just want that and they want the stability of like they want the provider and the and the and the the, alpha male yeah and like (laughs) and like the one that like is gentlemanly but like will not be attached with any baggage of feelings like they just want that they just want their man to give them money and and gifts and be on your happy way. Whoa. Uh, not, not you specifically, but I was going to say, ouch. No, that, not, that's not you, but I think, I think in general, that's how, it. that's may, maybe how a lot of women might feel. I don't know. But like, they don't, like women don't want their men to be more like emotional than them or to be more in touch with their feelings than them or to be crying more than them. <laughs> you know? I mean, I don't know. That's, that's a tough one because at the same time, if there's a man who is all the things you just said, he's like the alpha male. Yeah. <laughs> that also means, no, I'm serious. That also means that like he probably treats women like they're inferior or they're weaker. Yeah. And being a feminist type person that I am, I would not want to be treated as less than. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just had my brain However, takes me places. No, well, the, the place we're going that I wanted to get to earlier, um, before I was so rudely interrupted, I'm just kidding, um, is, <laughs> so I have all this free time, right? And so the other day, I laid on my bed, and I was like, I have downtime. Wow. I'm going to watch YouTube, which is the most not productive thing. Are I we moving do. on to... Okay. So hold on. So I'm getting there. Okay. What? <laughs> no, that, that's fine. 
I was gonna. I was gonna. It's okay. I was gonna. I was gonna reference a dumb movie. Go ahead. The sensitive men part. It just reminded me of uh, um, that movie, Bedazzled, with Brendan Fraser. My God, are you seriously referencing a Brendan Fraser movie? Like this is. I feel like this happens more than it should in our marriage. Brendan Fraser. Yes. Yeah. Brendan Fraser happens more than I would like him to. He was a scorpion king, wasn't he? I don't know. Anyway, so you were watching YouTube. <sighs> Dear God. I completely lost my train of thought. I was watching YouTube and I got sucked into a void because that's what happens when you have nothing going on and it's COVID and you can't really do anything or go anywhere at that point. And you're like, ah, okay, well, all I have is YouTube. YouTube, you my only friend. Um, so I started watching videos about angry Karens on TikTok and it was like angry Karens of TikTok part one. And then I got to like part six and I was like, there's six, there's more than that. I didn't even get through them all. And it was insane. And I was just like cracking up because some of this is out of control, but then it's like, you look at like those types of women and you're like the men that must right. be married to them. Holy crap. Okay. So Karens, let's talk here's, about it. Yeah. Let's talk about it. However, before I start bashing other humans, Oh I think, my gosh, get off your high horse. No, here's what I want to do. Do you have a nosebleed up there? Does it here's hurt you what to I be want that to high up above us all? As Okay, as you're talking from your high horse. I don't have a high um, horse. Mine's here's what, here's what I would like to do before I start bashing these Karens who might deserve it. I don't know. Um, is I want to reference a time when I might have been a Karen. Because that gives me a better feeling that that I can I can talk bad about other humans. <laughs> Okay, let's. See. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here for Which it. Which I have had. I mean, I've I've been. No, I want to hear you out on this. Like, I want to hear out. What I have been on the other like, end, like of a Karen. Yeah. So me I mean, I've I've worked at Starbucks. I feel um, like that is the number one place to like get your Karen training. Yeah. Which you and I have both. I've worked at Starbucks. Um, I delivered pizzas for many years. Um, and I was I also worked at a at a, uh, at a call center, uh, where I was tech support and customer <laughs> service <laughs> for. A lot of years, actually. Um, so I was on the. I've been on the other side of that. Uh, the wrath of a, of a Karen, I guess, is what you might want to call. But um, for me, I, I, I'm usually pretty patient with. In fact, most of the time, I'm pretty patient, and I can only think of like one instance when I here really good. Yep, here comes the children. I hear the pitter patter of little <laughs> mischievous, hungry, even the though they Christmas, had dinner. Christmas food. toes. Oh, here they are. Hi there. Did you need something, friend? I need that mic right there. So fuzzy. She needs that mic right there. It's so fuzzy. Um, well, you can't have it. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe later you can say something. Uh, okay, well, I think it's our first parenting pause of the night. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do a parenting pause. Go and refill your drinks and uh, get your snacks, and we'll be right back. We'll be right back. I need that now. All right, we're back. So, my Karen moment. Yes. Um, we, on an anniversary of ours, um, I bought us a hotel in Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. And I was confused and I thought that uh, the hotel we purchased was under a different name. Mm -hmm. And I basically thought we were paying more than we were supposed to. And I got upset at uh, the person on the phone who was selling the hotel to us, mm. and I was kind of I was kind of I was kind of a jerk. You actually, kind of being a bitch. I kind of was. <laughs> so, anyways, that's my Karen moment. Did you, you, did you push your over extra long bangs out of the way, <laughs> and then 
quaff your shaved back of your head and say, I probably I am pissed. Let me talk to your manager. I think I did ask for a manager. So, bitch. So I was a Karen. I I transformed (laughs) that one time. But uh, for the most part, um, I am very appreciative of food service workers and servers and bartenders and uh, like call center folks. I've been in their shoes and in, especially in the call center, life sucks. Um, I worked at a call center for like three or four years and that is one of the worst jobs ever. Like you're, you're pushed to, you know, take a certain amount of calls and there's no breaks in between calls. Like you are done with a customer and then you wait and you hope for a break. But then you hear that, that noise, that tone, there's like this tone that comes up that there's another call and you're like, yeah. And it's just like, oh, another call. (laughs) Uh, and it's, it's just, it's, it's misery. So Um, yeah, I appreciate folks. I mean, it's hard when you get bad service, but like, you're going to live through it. It's hard if your order is like wrong, but you're going to live, you're going to survive. And most of the stuff you're complaining about is a privilege anyway. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, this country is very entitled though. And I think that's why we have uh, spawned a ton of Karens. You know, it's really funny to me because I feel like the pandemic has brought out, like, Karens in this next level shit that's just, like, out of control. Um, I was watching some of those videos and I realized that, like, sometimes it's just people having a bad day, right? Um, But there's some where you can watch people and you can tell this is not the first time they've pulled that kind of garbage. And it's kind of crazy. Like, I feel like being in this pandemic has made people even more entitled, Um, which is, it's the worst, man. Like even the thing with like the masks, like, you know, you have people throwing fits about like, they're not wearing a mask in a store. Like one actually broke my heart. One video that I watched, there's an elderly gentleman and he was the owner of this, like, um, it was like a store, like a, not a pharmacy, but like a hardware store. And this lady walked in and this man had to be like 75 years old. Right. And he's the owner. He's got his mask on. And he tells her, like, hey, you know, you have to have a mask on. It's the state law. And she, like, went off on this man. Like, this elderly gentleman who is super polite, super kind. And she's like, I'm going to talk to the owner. And she's, like, freaking out, like, yelling, screaming, causing a big mess. And he's like, well, I am the owner. And she's like, I'm going to shut you down. I'm going to make sure that you are destroyed. Like, she was just going crazy. And I was like, lady... This is like a 75-year-old man. Can you calm the hell down? Like, if that was the kind of person that I came in contact with, like, Hmm. while I was at the store, I probably would have walked around myself. Like, I just can't imagine where people think it's okay to go off the way they do in these certain situations. It's crazy to me. Yeah. And I also wonder, too, how many of these uh, instances where these people are just getting super irate at people who are just trying to do their jobs... Mm -hmm. Uh, I wonder how much of this has to do with like mental health or mental illness, or maybe there's some underlying something happening that hasn't been checked, you know? (laughs) Maybe. Well, there's, Um, there's a few where you're like, eh, they might be on the edge and it might be a mental thing. Yeah. But you're right with COVID for sure. Like people's, um, tempers have been triggered and flared, especially with masks for some reason. And I think I said, told this story on the podcast before, but like, uh, (laughs) We were in Albuquerque, and I went to I went to Walmart, just me and the kids, mm-hmm. uh, because I had to get food. I had to feed the kids, and I think that was their first time going to a store. And I didn't want to take them to a store out of a COVID. couple months. Out of t- yeah, a couple months. This yeah. was this was I want to say September, mm-hmm. yeah, September. And we went to Walmart to get some couple of groceries um, because that's what there is in Albuquerque, Walmart. Mm-hmm. Um, Don't miss you. And. Uh, <laughs> And as as I was walking in, uh, there's masks everywhere. There's a mask mandate in New Mexico. Um, people are required to wear masks in, in public and in businesses. And um, as I'm as I'm standing there, oh, we have another. We have a child. What's up, baby? Okay, tell us something really quickly. We're not talking. To, we're talking to our podcast. I want LOL surprise. You want LOL surprise? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm walking into the into the Walmart wearing my mask, and this woman comes in. Two women come into the store uh, without any masks, and the greeter is like, "Hey, excuse me, you have to wear a mask. It's required. You have to wear a mask." And this woman like starts giving the this greeter, this Walmart greeter, a hard time. Who didn't make the the rules and didn't make the yeah, mandate? Yeah, he's just he's just there to greet yeah. and, and and I guess enforce the mask rule. But as like she started giving him a hard time, like I can I I saw the the guy. He's like, I don't get paid enough for this. Like <laughs> I don't I don't need to. Like this is not my fight. Yeah. Um. So I was I was like literally like pretty close, like pretty like right there. So I spoke up um, because I didn't like how how she treated well, this this greeter guy. Can I just and also people that are working at Walmart already get completely gypped on like minimum wage. They don't get benefits because Walmart will keep them at lower lower like hours. So they don't have to like do benefit stuff. Like this, per- it's not like this person wants to be working at Walmart during a pandemic. You know that's not what somebody would choose. They probably need the job, so don't be a jerk. <laughs> right. So I was right there, so I thought I would. I, would, I thought I would speak up. You can take. You can take that in the other room, please. Hey. She's uh, singing songs into a vacuum tube. <laughs> um, our daughter so, knows we have a microphone, and so she's hamming it up, like, yeah, she is. which is terrifying to me. I'm like, oh, good, yeah. is this the future? I don't know. Well, maybe I'll finish a thought, and we'll do our last parenting pause. I don't know. <laughs> so I, I spoke up, and I, I said, "Excuse me." Um, <laughs> Excuse me. The, the masks are required, and it's it's for everybody's it's for everybody's safety. And she proceeded to start coughing on me, like literally, like she's just like coughing on me in front of my kids. I'm wearing a mask, and I'm just like, "Holy crap! Like, what are you doing?" Um, and it was just it's something I've never experienced with another human yeah. ever, like that sort of conflict. Yeah. Um, but. These videos are coming up everywhere where people are saying, like, I, hey, you have to wear a mask. It's for the public health and people are getting pissed off and, like, throwing temper tantrums in stores. Right. It's just... Well, and it's just funny to me that, like, you're a grown person and you can't just, like, do something for the common good of other grown people. Like, it's not even that much of a sacrifice. Like, put something over your face. They make clear ones if it's a problem for you. They make little hats with, like, the shields on them if it's a problem for you. Like, how selfish Mm -hmm. do you have to be that you can't just, like, put a piece of fabric over your mouth for a few minutes while you take care of your business? The hats with the shields are kind of a cop-out, though. Those those face shields, those those don't do anything. See, and I'm not, like, yeah, like, I don't know. But what I'm saying, though, is, like, you, you can deal with a few minutes of, like, discontentment or, like being uncomfortable in a grocery store that you have the privilege to shop at, Mm -hmm. you can deal with that for a few minutes. Yeah, for sure. Okay, last thing, and then we're going to take a pause. What's up? Um, there's something that it's Christmas that you celebrate the holidays, and it's about joy and happiness. Aw, you're very sweet, sweetheart. Yes, Christmas is about joy and happiness. You're right. Mm -hmm. Not being grumpy, right? No. Or Santa will be, will will put you on on the naughty list. Oh yeah, you don't want to be on the naughty list. That's not a good place to be. Yeah, I bet Santa has a dungeon. <laughs> you bet Santa has a dungeon. I don't know wow. if he has a dungeon. All the I, naughty I, elves are down there, or yeah, what? I hope not. Not the not the naughty elves. When I when Christmas day, they had bad elfy. Oh, okay. Mm, okay. All right, well, let's Breaking take a... news. Yeah. Santa yeah. might have a dungeon. We don't know. Um, I watched that Christmas movie, and it's called... Mr. Grinch. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mr. Grinch. You like Cindy Lou, huh? Um, yeah. Let me tell you something on my microphone. Okay. One more well, thing. One more thing, and then we're going to take a break. Because... I'll Okay. All right. No! So. Next time I have Okay. We're gonna take a pause. We will be right back.
Okay, we're back. Oh, we are back again. Back straight. Guess, guess back who's again. back? Back, back again. again. <laughs> it's you and me. Backstreet Boys. Tell a friend. <laughs> sure. Okay. So, yeah, Karen's. Let's. I, I kind of want to just play the sound clip because I like. I like when you can imagine things and you don't actually see them. You can hear them. So. I'm putting you on citizen's arrest Are right you now. For what? Because look how close you parked. Okay, I'll move my car. No, no, you're not moving your car. We're staying right here till the cops come. No, I- I'm going to move my car. Oh, no, no, now. you're staying right here. Stop filming me. Hey, hey, yes. hey. Okay, what? I'll call you back. Hey, I have seen you around this neighborhood too many times. This is ridiculous. Your car is insanely loud. No, 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 <laughs> no. This, there are children that live in this neighborhood. You need to drive somewhere. You know what? I'm calling the police. This is insane. Don't you even think about going anywhere. I'm calling right now. This- why would you like tell I I am gonna make you I'm mad. Stay here. Stay here though. Don't go. Please don't go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I, I've been on the other end of that though. I'm like I'm a parent and there's the a-hole that has the you know, the Mustang with the modified uh, uh, exhaust that is is revving his engine at two in the morning as I just got my, my infant child to bed. Like that's, that's frustrating. Yeah. But like, if you're going to call the cops, just call the cops, like get, like get the, get the license plate or just like the car make and model and call the cops. Like you don't need to like confront people because you're like going to be crazy. Like, I think that's the thing that's like so frustrating is a lot of this is like, could be solved with like non-confrontational means. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, if you're really that mad, like, when you leave the store, call the manager on the phone or, like, talk to somebody at corporate if you have to. Yeah. Like, go through the proper channels. But, like, there's... freaking the hell out on somebody isn't going to do it for you. Yeah, there's no in-between, is not there? Is there? Like, no. I, I can understand if there's something that you need to accomplish as far as, like, maybe maybe this neighbor or whoever it is. Like, I, it must be a neighbor because he's, yeah. she's, like, she knows him. Um there's got to be a better way to to approach the situation. Like maybe you can say, "Hey, um, your car, your car is really loud," um, or I don't even know. Like, I noticed that your car is super loud. Um, like, there's a lot of kids here, and like, it's happening late at night. Would you just kind of like be yeah, mindful of the I don't time? Know. Yeah, there's or whatever. I mean, there's nicer ways to like go about it. I mean, I feel like that note we got at our old house when we moved in. Oh yeah. About our dogs is like a straight Karen note. Yeah, that was that was awful. <laughs> but the handwriting looked very very angry handwriting. It was it's like, like all erotic, caps, yeah. And it was like kind of scribbly. Yeah. So I don't know. Like Yeah, I I just I guess for me the the part of the whole Karen situation that irks me is like at what point in your brain do you lose all reason and think that like becoming a drama filled psychopath is going to fix your problem? Right. Or make people want to hear you. Yeah. Like, you know, like, it's just, it's, it's just funny to me. Like the whole, the whole thing with like, it's just so much drama and you're like, there's like good ways to like offer criticism or to disagree with somebody. You don't have to be like a raging bitch to do it. Um, you know, I've, I've had like moments where I, there's been a business and I'm like really disappointed and I'm like, I'm not going to go in there and be like, this was terrible. Like I just wrote an email and it was like, Hey, this is what I noticed. I just wanted to let you know um, because I like your business and like I just thought, you know, I'd let you know. And they wrote me back and like gave me like free food. <laughs> but it was I was polite about it. I wasn't like a jerk. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I wasn't doing it to get free anything. I just genuinely thought like they would probably want to know the feedback. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And I think entitlement and privilege is something that you have to think about too. It's a privilege to have somebody make your food for you. Yeah. Um, that is, I mean... It's a privilege that you can afford to go to Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't have to be super entitled all the time. And if somebody gets your order wrong, like... Yeah, it's, They're that's human. A, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I've, I've definitely had Karen moments with that. And, I, like, not at the people, but, like, with you. Mm-hmm. Like, and I feel so bad about it after, like... I, for me, and it's not an excuse at all, 
It's just funny because for whatever reason, whenever I order something, anything, doesn't matter what it is, at a restaurant, it's always the wrong thing. <laughs> like always. I always get the wrong meal. It's like a, it's like this universal curse that's on me. It's like Not at you, Burgerville, though. Not at Burgerville. Thanks, Burgerville. Not at I small. mean, I even got the right thing. Because like, <laughs> you didn't tell me what to order you, and I got, I got the right type of burger. It was perfect. It was delicious. Thank you. Um, no, but usually when I order like fast food or something, it's like the wrong thing and it's always the wrong thing. And so I get frustrated because I'm just like, good God, how many times are we going to do this? Yeah. (laughs) Like maybe if I start ordering what I don't want, I'll get what I do want. Um, but I also realize that that's a privilege. And I also realize that like, I could just not have fast food at all. Like I'm lucky that I can afford those things and Mm -hmm. like, I need to not be ungrateful, you Mm -hmm. know? Yeah, Totally. I have altered, um, for me, I've altered my ordering style. I don't have any sort of specific like preferences. I don't ask anybody to take anything off. Like I I just order however, however it's ordered Yeah. and I eat it. Um, when I was a kid, I didn't like onions or mayonnaise. Um, but I found out that if you try it, you might like it. And (laughs) turns out that I, I like onions. I mean, I don't. I don't love onions. Um, Is there a party in your tummy, like Yo Gabba Gabba says? <laughs> Yo Gabba Gabba. Uh, no, so I mean, I'll eat all the onions. Um, uh, I, it turns out I like mayonnaise now. <laughs> maybe maybe my tastes have just evolved, but uh, most of the time, I'll just. I don't think I've ever, not ever, but like I, I as an adult, I don't think I've made any sort of special modification to a menu item because. I think probably because most of my like early adulthood, um, I spent my my time working mm-hmm. on the other end, mm-hmm. and I've seen people's people's ridiculously specific orders, <laughs> uh, not even not not even just at Starbucks, but at when I, I worked at Pizza Hut as a delivery driver for like seven years or something, um, people ordering these ridiculous orders like, yeah. well done, extra sauce or no sauce or. You know, like I, they want like 37 pepperonis. And if you oh put 38, gosh. it's going to be, you know, all hell's going to break loose. It's like the people at Starbucks that order their drinks at a certain temperature. You're like, oh, does it taste like that temperature? Yeah. Like, do you know what that temperature tastes like? Or right. are you just trying to be a high maintenance jerk? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are those are hard to do. Like, I, I had a customer <laughs> at Starbucks that every, she would come in um, daily and her latte was 137 degree latte uh so you had to have a little thermometer in oh, the gosh. in the steaming cup totally and you had to this. you had to get it and you you have to be pretty good with it because if you uh, leave it in too long like the the thermometer is not like an instant thermometer it's like an analog little yeah thermometer so you kind of have to take a guess at when to stop so anyways th- those were those were a pain well, it's also crazy too because like at some point when you're steaming the milk it's going to burn and like it's not going to taste good with the espresso. Yeah. And then you're just going to get a latte with burned milk. Right. But that's what you wanted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and I I get it too like you're going to pay you're you're going to pay for something and you want it the way you want it. Um <laughs> I'm if I'm going to drop 7 bucks for a latte, you want it to be made right. I get that. But like within um, reason. But you're also spending seven bucks on a latte. Right. <laughs> so Well, Starbucks doesn't solely exist to make you happy, Karen. Not even just like Starbucks. <laughs> I'm just thinking coffee shops. Like yeah. you're ordering a latte. Like, we used to have... Get over yourself. Like just, I don't know. We used to have at my old Starbucks, we used to have venti dry cappuccino, venti non-fat dry cappuccino lady. I still remember her order. Mm -hmm. And she would sit there and weigh it out in her hand. And if it was not dry enough, and for people that don't know, like, a dry cappuccino is, it's pretty much all foam. And, like, just just the espresso and a teeny tiny bit of milk at the bottom. It's like a cappuccino. It's, like, feather light. It's a big cup with mostly foam. There's a blurred line between a a wet cappuccino and And a a, a dry latte. Right. (laughs) Right. Yeah. And so she used to come in every day and every day she would complain about it. And every day she would send it back. And we're like, if we are really this bad at making your drink, why are you here every day? And it was like, she just, Maybe she just was a little lonely inside and needed, needed well, she, uh, it was like to she fill that void. Legit just like got off on like sending her drink back. Mm-hmm. One day she sent it back four times and I happened to be working and I dropped it in the, in the trash. And I was like, I'm not making it again. And I walked into the back. I was done. I like, I had had it. I was over it. I was like, lady, I don't think so. Yeah. 
<laughs> somebody else is going to have to do this for you because it's not going to be me. Yeah, for sure. You're about to lose a limb. But I've also been <laughs> like, I've also been in that situation where I've gone to a business and have been treated like I'm just bothering them. Mm-hmm. You know, that doesn't feel nice either. No. <clears throat> so as a on the business side of things customer service like you are i don't know there's so many factors in this but um customer service is supposed to make you feel welcome and make you feel like uh you're you're valued and that you um have a stake in this and like you know what i mean like there's like ownership and all all sorts of other things involved with customer service um and i've gone to places that just are bothered that you're even there. So that's, that's kind of different. And I don't know, I don't know, like maybe I'll just leave. Like, I don't want to be around people who are just mean. (laughs) Well, yeah. And also I feel like you don't, you wouldn't want to give your money to a business where they're treating you like that. You're like, I didn't come in here to be like treated like garbage. Right. And it's different too. Like if you're just in there and they're treating you like total trash, that's different than like you raising a fuss and then people reacting to that, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I I think it's a little different. Like there's been some places we've gone uh, back before COVID um, with our kids that like we would go in and you could tell they did not want us there because we had kids. Oh, yeah. And like. And I don't blame them. (laughs) And it was, I mean, and it was like, it was a little bit frustrating because you felt like kind of crappy and you're just like, I promise, like, I'm not going to destroy your restaurant. I'm going to tip you really well. I know what it's like to clean up after kids. I promise I'm not a jerk. But at the same time. They've probably had really bad experiences with families with kids yeah. who just they might have the even had like leave. bad experiences with our kids too. Like I hope not. I mean, our kids make messes. Our kids haven't been to a restaurant in over a year, which is crazy. It's like wild. Yeah, man. that's kind of crazy. Isn't I guess they huh? I said, isn't that strange? It is strange. Um, they're animals. They don't need to go. I anywhere. think we've done like a like on our trip out here. We sat outside on a bench mm-hmm. in I don't know what town that was. Boardman. Boardman, or Oregon. Oregon. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, like outside it. of that, I don't think they've gone into a restaurant, have they? Mm-mm. Which is good. Like, yeah. that's, I mean, it's not good, but like, it's... it's probably know. better for everyone mm-hmm. <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just, I guess for me, I don't understand the Karen mentality. I don't understand how you can be that out of touch with, with life and privilege. And I don't understand how you can treat other people so terribly. Yeah. Yes, yeah, son. Yeah. We're almost done. Why? Mm-hmm. What do you need? Um, how much yeah. Sure, about thirty minutes. Yeah. yeah. What are you gonna? Are you planning something? No. Oh, okay, I was just checking. Should we break real quick, or? Yeah, or I'm gonna what? grab something to drink real quick. Okay, parenting pause. We'll be right back. So let's wrap this up. What do you yeah. say? So if what do you, you? Oh, good. I was gonna say if you want to watch people being terrible to each other, you can look up you know Karens and all that stuff on TikTok and YouTube and pretty much anywhere the yeah. internet is. So enjoy can I ask that. you a question though? Like, um, why why is it entertaining to watch that? Like, I I'm just wondering that because um, okay. So can I give you my point of view? Sure. <laughs> As you roll your eyes. Well, because you're gonna anyway. No. Okay. <laughs> For me, um, I, 2020 has not been super duper easy and I'm trying to like fill my space with like goodness. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I see the terribleness side of human nature, which is basically in front of me when I see the news, even like just regular old news, Mm -hmm. it's hard for me to on purpose put even the, even more terribleness in front of my face like what sort of entertainment like why 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 (laughs) why god why what i mean why would why would i mean people liked jerry springer for a reason i'm not saying it's quality television um no i think for me i can speak for myself and i can speak for like other people when they've told me but for me it's like a it makes you feel better about yourself as a human 
which be- is because you're you're not that crazy, right? And you're not you're not that but, messed up to other people. But I mean, it's not saying a lot that you're like, oh, I get to look at people losing their shit so that I can feel better about myself. Like that's not good. Um, <laughs> I'm not that bad. <laughs> at least I'm not that lady. Um, and also, I think for me, it's humorous. Like there's a humor in it. Like I have to be able to laugh at stuff like this because 2020 has been so terrible. Like if you can't laugh at stuff like that then I don't know. Like, you have to be able to laugh sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes it's just funny. Like, some of them are just funny. Like, I get a kick out of watching people in socially awkward situations. I always have. I don't know what it is. Like Um, America's Funny Some Videos? No, not like slapstick. But, like, just, like, I love watching people. Okay, like, um, Undercover Boss. Or, like, things where people, like, just kind of, like, mentally mess with other people. Mm-hmm. What's that show we were... Not Scare Tactics, but the other one... Punked? N- kind of like Punked, but it's the other one. It's the, it's the kid from... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my god. It's gosh. on Netflix. It's the kid from it's, Stranger it's Things. It's Gaten Matarazzo, and I can't yeah. remember... I mean, if you just Google... Uh... But he plays these, like, pranks on people, and it's so funny because people, like... I just love... I love that. I love watching people in socially awkward situations. Yeah. It's humorous to me. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's probably part of it. Um, yeah. And yeah, so I think that that's one of the things. Prank encounters. Yes, prank encounters. Oh, there's an article here on BuzzFeed oh, News. I, no, I don't, don't ruin this for me. Netflix Don't is, take this from me, 2020. <laughs> the Stranger Things actor that's drawing, so I guess the show was, draw, was drawing backlash. Because um, people are feeling awkward about it. The new show, Prank Encounters, has been criticized for playing tricks on people who are looking for work. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I guess that's the whole premise of the show is, like, they're putting this, like, job posting out there. And these people are, like, really just trying to get a job. And I okay, get, I kind of get but that. but they're still getting paid to be on that show. Yeah. So. But, they, they, and, but yeah, I kind of get that. Anyways, um, yeah, so I get it. So yeah. there's some entertainment part from that. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, and that's the same reason people watch reality TV. I mean... Why are shows like The Kardashians so popular? I don't watch it. Got me on that one. Yeah, I I mean, I don't watch it. I think that they're worthless human beings. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they have far. some... But, I'm yeah. sure they're nice. Um, But, like, it's entertaining. Yeah. I guess, the, the like, reality, reality shows, quote-unquote reality shows, uh, there's a genre that I can get into... But it has to, I don't know. I mean, and that's even hard for me. Like, I, I was going to say, like, the nature, like, outdoors. Like, Bear Grylls is kind of pushing it. There's an, there's the other guy, Survivor Man, that I like that I liked. But, like, Bear Grylls, like, when he's off camera, he's, like, eating steak and stuff. I mean, I, I mean that's what I'm saying. Like, it's <laughs> his, his show was somewhat entertaining, I suppose. But, like, there was the Survivor Man who was actually out in nature. I thought that was pretty interesting. And then we watched that Netflix show. Alone. Alone. Yeah. Which was uh, reality, which was fun. Yeah. But, uh, okay, cool. So, it's just reality show. It's our reality... Entertainment. Entertainment. Okay. On a smaller level, all right. I think. So, yeah. Cool. I get it. I mean, we all have our guilty pleasures. That's probably mine. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, what are you listening to, Lorenzo? Do you want me to go first? I do. You have my blessing. All right. <laughs> Here comes the sun. I'm scared. Our kids are getting into trouble. Luke, Luca. Luke, there's there's no halfway with him. Uh-huh. He's like 100 miles an hour or zero. Uh-huh. But, uh, all right, so music. Um, let's see. This is riveting when I have to look up my music. <laughs> we were listening I, to Chuck Berry tonight. Yeah, for our dinner. Yeah. Um, I haven't really been... Listening to much, oh god, they sound like they're pillaging our it snacks. It does. Do you hear it? Now they're, trying, like, now they're trying to get in the door. It's like velociraptors. Let's make this short. Okay, hurry. Um, so I've been listening to uh, I've been listening to Pandora. Uh-huh. Surprisingly, weird. Um, I have a so my 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 Apple Watch. Um, you don't need to explain why. You can just tell us what you're listening to. But I've been listening to Pandora. So because my Apple Watch only does Pandora or Apple Music, and I don't pay for Apple Music, uh, Pandora is free. Uh-huh. So when I go on my runs, um, I listen to Pandora, and my Pandora, all of my Pandora stations are like 10 years old. 
Mm-hmm. So I've been listening to 10-year-old indie music. So whatever I was listening to 10 years ago, that's what I'm listening to now. So I'm listening to Thrice, um, some some um, Death Cab for Cutie. I'm listening to Arcade Fire, uh, Modest Mouse. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's just random Pandora playlists uh, from 10 years ago, which is really kind of a blast from the past. What was that other French band? Um List that they had that song list of list of Mafima or whatever it is. Listomania. List, yeah. Phoenix. How do, yeah. How do you, how do you say that word? List, listomania. Listomania. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix is on that playlist. Mm-hmm. So when I'm going on my runs, um, I've been kind of taken back to Missouri times when we used to live in Missouri. Yeah. So as far as podcasts are concerned, um, I mentioned earlier in our podcast that we were, I've been listening to, or I listened to one episode of the Cozy Robot podcast, which in that podcast, he talked about um, the presence of joy and happiness and how in our culture today, we are searching for and trying our hardest to keep joy and happiness in our lives 100% of the time. But Mike McCarg does a really good job of breaking down really complex things uh, simply for you know, lay people and explaining to people like evolutionary backgrounds as to why we have feelings and feelings are important to do a job in the human body. So joy and happiness are rewards for things that are good. I mean, but like people th- could listen to the podcast, right? No, I know, but the, I want to, I want to say this. Okay. So, uh, and like things like anger and fear, um, and like the, the, and sadness, emotions that we generally don't want to have, um, are important as well. So it was a really good podcast. <clears throat> and then the other podcast, uh, I mean, my other usual, just podcasts, my, my career podcast. Um, and that's it, I think. Oh, and then I listened to the pastor with no answers podcast, the most recent one, which is really good. And something I wanted to talk about, um, maybe in a future podcast for us, you go ahead. No, our kids are running up and down the hall, and I'm really wondering what the hell's going on out there. <laughs> it's, like, stressing me out. Is it? And you're, like, rambling, and I'm trying to figure this out, and I hear footsteps and running, and I'm just like, what is going on? So I'll finish up, and I'll let you do yours, and I'll... I'll, I'll let... It's making me anxious. Yeah, I'll get him down. I'll get him calm. Um, and the other podcast episode I listened to was Pastor With No Answers. He interviewed a gay pastor, um, <clears throat> and they were talking about... Um, Basically, the evangelical church in the United States and uh, gay affirming and non-gay affirming and the history behind the translation of the word homosexual in the Bible, which I found out was like 1948 or 1942 or something, was when it was translated as homosexual. Uh, So it's pretty – it was a really good episode, Um, but that's what I'm listening to. And I'm going to let you talk and I'm going to take Dear Lord, these kids. Um, I have been listening to, for podcasts, I started one by Wondery, which, again, everything they touch is gold, more or less. So, you know it's going to be good. Um, They're just amazing at storytelling. Uh, So, it's Death of a Starlet. It is about um, a girl who, in the 70s, was in Playboy. Her name was Dorothy. Um, I don't remember her last name. It's a long one. But it's about her life, and just the way it's narrated and the storytelling behind it is really good. I really like it. It's a true story. Um, I've been listening to Catfish, the podcast. That's a guilty pleasure. Also a Wondery podcast, though. So that's kind of interesting that they're, I just, everything that Wondery makes is more or less amazing. Um, so there's that. Um, I'm trying to think of other podcasts. That's really all I've been listening to is in terms of podcasts lately, just because I haven't had a lot of time to, um, to really delve too deeply into podcasting. Um, music, I've been kind of shuffling through a lot of my old ones. I am listening to this artist who is called K Tranada. It's K-A-Y-T-R-A-N-A-D-A. The song is called Chances. It's a very good, mellow, kind of R&B style song, which I really like. Um, really mellow, really nice. Um, gosh, I feel like... Even music has been a little boring for me lately. I just feel like I've been listening to the same thing over and over again. Um, 
nothing really brand new. Nothing new. Nothing new. Um, yeah, nothing really new. Um, I've been watching with you that show, The Great. Yeah, you on our last podcast episode, you had binged the first what three episodes or yeah. four? <clears throat> now we're both caught up equally. Yeah. so it's good. I I enjoy it. It's it's a it's a good it's a good show. Yeah, it's definitely um, not historically accurate, and it's definitely got no. some crude stuff in it. So, like, not for the faint of heart. No, and, but it's and entertaining. Stuff, but it's entertaining. Um, yeah, I listen. I watch this girl on YouTube who has this channel. Her name is Charlotte Dobre, and she's from Canada. She lives in Vancouver, and she does like pop culture segments and and things like this. And she's really interesting to watch too. I really enjoy her videos. So I've been watching a lot of her lately as well. And she just got really, really sick and was in the hospital, and I felt so bad. I, like, don't even know this person, but I was like, I just want to hug her. She looks like she feels terrible. Um, But, yeah, that's really it for me. Um, I haven't really (laughs) been doing too much other than that, hanging out with Mm -hmm. kids and trying to adjust to life. (laughs) Yeah, which is hard. Mm -hmm. Adjusting to a new life um, with your spouse, with your kids, figuring everything out. I feel like we've been really disconnected. Yeah. Me and you have been sort of at each other a little bit. Well, we haven't. I mean, it's hard because we knew this was going to happen. Like, we knew we weren't going to have... Which was the, crazy because... The grandparents... Can I finish? Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Don't get cranky. I'm not cranky. Okay. No, we knew we weren't going to have the grandparents help and stuff, like, moving here. We knew it was just going to be us. But I think we didn't realize the weight of, of that going through so many changes. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's hard when you don't have support systems. Yeah, of course. And I know everybody's like, I told you so. But I I mean, I... But I we knew it. Yeah. It's just like, it's just, I think it's taking on a different form than we thought it would. Maybe. I know that when we first got here, it was sort of celebration and we felt, I, I felt pretty connected to you. And then like those last couple of days, I think there's there's been some distance and I don't know, I don't know why, but... Well, I'll, I mean, since we're getting into the nitty-gritty... Nitty-gritty. A little off schedule here, and then we'll wrap up. Um, honestly, it's just like there's no break from our kids. And it's it's not even like a break like date night, like not that kind of a break. But like our daughter, who's four, is going through this phase where she just needs to be on us or near us all the time. Like literally physically in between us. Like no matter what we're doing. And it's just really hard mm-hmm. to to not have even that like intimate space as married people like mm-hmm. she's in our bed every night like she's on us all the time I love her very much but I kind of am just like okay kind of need space with my spouse now thanks like please mm-hmm. so yeah that that's not as hard on me I know I know that's definitely more hard for you yeah but when when you're struggling I am an empathetic person. Here she Speak is. Speak of the devil. Um, and I I struggle when you struggle. Uh-huh. My name is Juju. <laughs> yes, we know your name is Juju. So, so, so when you're struggling with something, I, I feel that too. So anyways. Like right um, now, case in point. Yeah. Like can't even have 10 minutes to myself. Ugh. Yeah, but we are establishing, we're reestablishing our lives, like you said. Uh, I think part of your support system is the routine that you have built up. Um, I think in Albuquerque, we had sort of a not-so-healthy routine. But well, it, we also but had it, outlets. What's that? We also had outlets. Yeah. So I think it's I think it's good to start over and to build, build our... Um, routines over again because our routines in Albuquerque were not healthy I don't think but they were still routines so it it felt more familiar and better but being here I think it's allowing us to establish more more healthy um, productive routines and I hope we can do that so yeah I agree okay so that is it for this one Um, hope you enjoyed And we will talk to you on the next one. Bye.